You and I both agree that tables or matrix visualizations are one of the most commonly used visualizations while you're creating dashboards or reports in Power BI. But the problem is that once you use a table or a matrix, it doesn't look as sophisticated or as charming as a chart, a bar chart, a line chart, or any other fancy visual. So how can you take your standard looking table or matrix visualization and make them look sophisticated, elegant, and presentable? In this video, I'm gonna share some very interesting ideas to uplift the quality of your table visualization. You're going to like it a lot. Let's start. When you start creating a basic table or a matrix visualization, you will end up creating something like this, which is where probably I have year, the quarter, the subcategory of the product. And against that, I have kept my total sales and total units. And if this is what you're sticking into your dashboard or your visualization, this is not going to look elegant. So let's just start working on this particular table visual and layer it with different ideas and strategies to make it look beautiful and elegant. My first idea is choosing a tabular layout. In Excel, if you would have done this in a pivot table that would have also been called as a classic layout in the old pivot tables, but it's called a tabular layout in pivot tables. Let's just see how this is done. It has gone through quite a few transitions, but this is how it looks at the moment. So I'm working with a simple table like I showed it to you, year, quarter, and we have subcategories against that we have total sales and units. Now you can see that all the dimensions are stuck in the first column itself. I can see years, quarters, and subcategories all in just one column. However, to make this a little more cleaner and presentable and even easier to read, what I can do is I can have one column for the year, one column for the quarter, one column for the subcategory, and then eventually all the measures, which is total sales and units and stuff like that. How can you do that? Well, you're going to select this particular visual right here. You're going to go off to the format. Quick side note, the format pane can also be opened by double clicking on the border of the visuals. If I just happen to double click right here, I am actually going to open up the format tab right here. That's a side trick. Nevertheless, now once I go in the format, you're going to see that we have layout and style presets within which we have the layout and currently we have the layout chosen as compact means that lay everything into just one column, which is something that I don't really want it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the compact to a table layout and it looks very, very clean. You can see that we have also gotten the labels up on the top. So we have a year label, we have the quarter label and the subcategory label and the table looks slightly better and a bit more readable. If you're enjoying this video so far, I'd like to give a big shout out about my courses on Power BI, especially tax, modeling and the M language. I teach them in a very, very structured way. I try to give you the logic of understanding the problem, deconstructing the problem, and then framing the solution of the problem. That logic helps you to understand the problem at hand that we are doing in the course. Not only that, but you can then take the logic and apply it to your own cases as well, which is going to tremendously boost your confidence of solving your own data problems. Hundreds of students have joined my courses and they have benefited a lot. In case you're interested, the link is down in the description. Go back to the video. My next idea is changing the standard style of the table and adding a bit of breather and white space by increasing the padding of the table. You'll understand once you take a look at it. So the first thing that we've done is obviously converted that into a table layout. That's nice. Now the next thing is that you're going to see that often the alternative rows are going to be colored as gray. So this is gray and this is gray and then this is gray, so on and so forth. But it just creates clutter in the table. If you were to just color everything white, it's going to look fantastic. So if you just maybe click on the table visualization or the matrix, you can see that we have the style right here, which I'm going to choose like a minimal layout. And you can see that it looks a lot more cleaner and it has added a bit of space within the rows as well. Now I can increase that padding and typical padding that I try to keep in my table visual is at least five. So I can just go over to this particular format and choose something called as padding. If I can't find it, I can just go over in the search and start searching for something called as padding. In the grid, I'm going to find padding, which at the moment is set to three. I can increase that to five or six. And now the table starts to bring and looks a lot more cleaner than what we started with. The next intentional thing that I tend to do in my tables to make them look better is that I take a look at the totals and I only keep them at the right places. Now you can see that at the moment we have the total for the subcategory and we have the total for the quarter and we also have the totals for the year all at the bottom of this particular table which is right here. Now you can choose to have all the totals if you need it but sometimes you may not need all the totals. In this particular scenario let's just say that I don't really want the total of the subcategory. However I want the total for the quarter. That means I want this particular total. However, I don't want this total and I don't want this particular total. How do you selectively remove totals is something that I will teach you next. So you click again on the visualization. Once you go over to the format, you're going to go over to the row subtotals. In the row subtotals, you will activate something called as per row level that gives you the option to customize the totals. If you turn that on, you're going to see that right now we are at the row level, which is subcategory. That means you are at this particular level. And once all the subcategory finishes, we have the total right here, which is something that 
I do not want. So I'm going to go and pick up the subcategory right here. Once I do that, you can see that we have the uh, show subtotal and I'm going to turn that off and the subtotals are off. And now with lesser totals, the table starts to look slightly better. But you have to make a choice that at which level do you want to show or not show subtotals. The next thing that I tend to do is I tend to turn off the auto size of the column widths off and I don't really want the table to keep resizing automatically as I move and drag the columns, which I, I hate it. Let's just see how that is done. So at the moment, if you take a look here, year has a certain size of the column and quarter has a certain size of the column. If you want to increase or decrease it, you can actually do that. And once you do set the size of the column, you can turn off the auto fit off. So if you just maybe shift click on the year column, it's going to give you the selection ability. You can see that there's a square or like a rectangle outside of that. And now if you happen to use the shift keys, shift and the arrow keys, you'd be able to increase or decrease the size of this particular column. And let's just say that I have set my column widths and this is how I would want it. Let's just say this is total units. And let's say this is also the same size as total sales. Now, once I have set the column width, the next thing that I tend to do is I tend to turn this particular thing off, like no more sizing of the columns automatically by Power BI. So I click on the visual right here and I'm going to search something called as auto. And you can see that we have auto size width, which I happen to turn it off. This is one thing that I tend to do. Now my pivot table is not going to move as I get more columns or anything inside of the pivot table. The next thing that I tend to do is that if in case I don't want the user to have collapsible categories, then I am going to also turn off the plus minus signs. You can see that at the moment we have the collapsible year, collapsible quarter, so on and so forth. If I don't want the user to fiddle around with these and I want the user to take a look at the entire table, then I'm going to turn this off. So it just gives a more cleaner layout. You can just click on the pivot table and then go over to the format, click, just type the plus thing and you have the plus minus icons. If you want it to be minimal, you can change the color, you can change the size, but if you don't want it, you can actually turn it off and they are going to be turned off and you are working with a slightly neater table visualization. Another thing that I tend to do a lot in my table visuals to enhance the insight quality of the table, rather than just having some standard total units, total sales kind of metrics, is that I often create measures that give a very high quality text insights concatenated with labels and numbers. Let me show you what that means. So let's just say that you're at the moment taking a look at 2001, quarter three, you're taking a look at the subcategory bikes. And maybe I want to tell the user that in this particular subcategory, what was the winning product, that one product that gave you the most amount of sales. So in Q3 in 2001, under this particular subcategory, which was the winning product. And for that, you can write very interesting text-based calculations, something like this. Now, at the moment, this particular calculation is made using concatenate X. If you don't know how to create these sophisticated calculations, I've done several videos on the use of concatenate X. I'm going to leave links to that, but this is going to be brilliant. So now at the moment, if I just happen to drag this visualization off to my visual, it looks very, very interesting. And you can see that not only do I see the sales and the units sold in that particular subcategory, but in that subcategory in the quarter, I also get to see which was the winning product and what was the sales of that winning product. So these interesting text based calculations are going to enhance the quality of the table visualizations and more insights are given to the end user. The next interesting thing that I tend to do is add some KPIs to my table visualizations. If you are working with a table and that has a lot of rows to scroll through, it will be interesting for the user to quickly take a look at some rows that have met a certain KPI. Now, KPIs are something that you can decide on what condition the KPI are met or not met. But the interesting part that I'm going to talk about is that how can you use these conditions of certain rows meeting the KPI and add very interesting icons that represent the row in a nice way. So let's just say that I have created a simple measure and in the measure, I'm just saying that, hey, if the quarterly sales of the subcategory is less than 10,000, then I would want a red dot to appear. Now, this 10,000 is an arbitrary number. You can have any condition added here. But the point is that the ability of adding these custom icons is going to uplift the quality of your visuals and quickly declare that which rows are meeting or not meeting the KPIs. This is how it looks. So if I happen to drag the KPI right here, it is going to give you a blank in most scenarios because it doesn't really have that condition unmet. But in case the condition was not meeting and the row sales is not 10,000, then it's going to show up that KPI. Now you can adequately decide that where do you want that KPI to be shown. So let's just say that I want the KPI to be shown before the best selling units. The KPI comes right here. It creates an adequate space in between as well. And we have the icon presented right here. The next interesting feature that you can use to uplift the quality of your table visualizations is nothing but conditional formatting. And it's super powerful. Now at the moment, if you take a look at the sales, it's good enough. But at a glance, I want to take a look at amongst all of these quarters and amongst all of the subcategories, show me the winning subcategories. Like where was the sales the largest? At the moment, I have to read the numbers to find out which one is the largest. But if 
I had a bar here, like a short bar that actually talks about that this is the largest and this is actually pretty small. This is going to be a very interesting visualization to take a look at. You can do that using data bars in uh, conditional formatting. So how do you do it? You actually click on uh, the particular visualization right here. Go over to the format. In the format, you're going to go to cell elements and I'm going to actually pick up total sales on which I'm trying to apply the data bars. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to pick up, let's say total sales. And I am actually going to turn on the data bars, which at the moment comes up with very bright colors. And I don't really want that because it's technically obscuring the number right here, which I don't want it. So I am actually going to click right here on the FX right here. And I'm going to say that the bar color is going to be very subtle, indicative of the value, but not going to eat into the visibility of the number itself. So how do you do it? You just click on the bar and you pick up one of the lighter colors and I'm going to click on OK. And the color looks like that. Now you can quickly take a look at which bar is larger, which bar is smaller. The other interesting thing that you can do, which just to make it neater, you can see that the bar also has a small axis and it's kind of just not looking good. This black line right here, it is good because you have an axis, but I don't really want to have an axis right here. So I can actually turn off the axis. I'm going to go to data bars once again, and you can see that we have the axis color right here, which I am actually going to turn it out to white and the axis kind of goes away and the bar starts to look a lot, lot more cleaner. Another very interesting technique of using data bars is something like this, which is going to take your data bar experience to the next level. Now, let's just say that I don't want to have the data bar and the sales in the same column. I want to have two separate columns for that. So what I can do is I can create a pseudo sales column and just have data bars over there. So let's just go ahead. And for the moment, I am going to remove the data bars experience from here. So no data bars. And I'm just going to maybe make a new measure and I'm going to call this as total sales bars. And I am just going to reference my total sales measure as the way it is. I'm going to drag this off to my visual right here. It gives me the number, but I would want this next to my total sales right here. Now this is where, or maybe this is where I would want to show the bars. So I'm just going to move this on the top and this is where I want to show the bars. And this is where I want to show the numbers. Well, now I'm going to apply the data bar right here and turn off the numbers. So I'm just going to go right here and I'm going to say, Hey, the, measure under consideration is going to be total sales bars and the data bars is going to be turned on. I'm going to click on the FX, which gives me the options to edit that. I'm going to pick up a very light color, probably a bit darker because we are just going to have a bar and I don't really want to have the axis color. This is good. And I want to show the bar only. I don't really want to show the numbers and this is good to go. Click on okay. And we just have the bars. Now at this stage, you can see that we have the bars good, but I don't really want to have the totals right here. And I don't really want to have this total sales bars as a title. So how do we make these subtle changes? I'm going to go off to my total bars measure and I'm going to say, Hey, why don't you take a look that if you are working in the subcategory and the quarter, then you show the bar. If you're working at the total level, then do not show the bar. So I'm going to say something like if in scope of the quarter, that means you're working within the quarter, then I would want you to show, show total sales. Otherwise I don't want you to show anything and the totals are removed and they are good to go. Now I just want to have the better title as well. So I can just go ahead into my panel right here and instead of writing total sales, bar. Let's just see that if I can just move a space and this is good to go. At the moment, you can see that the title of the entire table has gone a bit bad. So I'm going to fix it by remove the wrapping on the title. So if I click on the table right here and I search for the word wrap in the format, I'm going to see that we have the column headers and the text wrap is on. I don't really want to wrap the text. I can turn it off and we have the titles back in its position. Now we can squeeze this all the way and this is going to be my total sales. Now it looks cohesive. You can see that this is entire section that shows you total sales. I can quickly take a look at the sales. I can take a quickly take a look at the bars and the tables looks fantastic. My last trick is super interesting because in this particular trick, you're going to learn that how do you customize the total of any particular measure? So at the moment, if you take a look at the total right here, we had a total, we customized that to show nothing right here. And moreover, if you take a look at my best selling skews, it actually does not show the best selling skew at the total of the year. It technically takes a look at all of these skews, adds the values up and shows me the overall total of the entire year. How do you actually customize this total? I'm going to teach you in the next video. Stay tuned and I'll see you there. Bye.